Hello and welcome back to We Met Behind the Castle. Today we're going to talk all things Epic Universe. We have all the details for all the different worlds in Epic Universe. We have details on two hotels. There is a third hotel. We haven't gotten anything from Universal Studios as far as like what the interior looks like, but we do have some details as to what the theming is going to be over at that resort. So we'll talk a little bit about it, but we pretty much have all the details that we're going to have, I believe, as far as these initial releases. And then they're going to release different things as we go along. So we'll kind of keep that updated as the year goes on and as this opens in 2025. But Epic Universe, Universal Studios, Orlando, um, it's their fourth park. Universal Studios, Islands of Adventure, and Volcano Bay are their other three. Volcano Bay is a water park. The other two are uh, amusement parks or theme parks. Um, and Epic Universe is coming in at a time where I think Central Florida is really starting to see um, a probably the reaping the benefits of the rewards and the um, amount of competition that's happening, I think, right now with Disney and Universal. Universal's finally stepping up and building a park, I think, that we will all be um, – huge fans of i think this will draw uh, a ton of people to the orlando area that might not have visited before um i think it will bring people back and even longer for um, orlando stays this requires you i guess to stay um more days with universal studios uh, i know a lot of people spend weeks at disney but now universal adding its fourth park and probably one of the best parks that's been built in north america and maybe even the world um universal is very excited I know that fans are very excited. I can't wait to see what this actually looks like when it comes to fruition, when it comes um, to Orlando in 2025. They do not have a release date as of yet, but they will start to kind of release that stuff as we get closer and closer and things start to really come together for Epic Universe. I don't want to spend too long on an intro, so I think we're going to jump right into it. So this is Epic Universe, Universal Studios, Fourth Park, um, and we're going to just start with some of the basics. Epic Universe is our Universal Studios fourth theme park built on 750 acres of land just a few miles behind Universal Studios Florida, Islands of Adventure, and Universal Volcano Bay. This new offering will transport guests uh, to an expansive, vivid worlds filled with awe-inspiring attractions, entertainment, hotel, dining, and more. So Universal had always been kind of like a three-day uh, adventure, I guess, or maybe even a two-day if you're doing Islands of Adventure at Universal Studios. Some people even would uh, argue that it was a one-day kind of thing. But Universal Studios, adding Epic Universe is one of the biggest moves that they've made as a company. It probably is the biggest move that they've made as a company. And as more details have been released, we've really started to see what this park can be. And I'm really excited to share some of those details with you all today. These are, again, just initial um, details that have been released. They say full details, some of them. Some of them are like, they do, you know, as many details as possible to kind of fill you in on what's going on in these different worlds. But I think Univers or Epic Universe and Universal Studios, um, I think there's going to be more released as we learn more. Maybe some character interactions and maybe some tidbits that they left out to kind of keep that momentum going. Because they're going to want to market this very well, and they already are. But I think they're going to keep some things from... The general public that we haven't heard yet so that way that they have something to kind of push out and keep people excited and, and mo you know motivated to get down here and all sorts of things so we don't have any um specifics as far as the tickets really are concerned um i know there's been some discussion of like are they going to sell single day tickets they actually came out and said that um they they're looking to sell package deals or multi-day tickets where single tickets might not be readily available or they'll sell out um, so Universal has kind of released some of those details, but we don't really have a whole lot to go off of as far as what that looks like and if that's going to change. Are annual pass holders going to be allowed in the first months or two or whatever it might be? Are they going to soft open it? Or are they going to launch right into this thing? Are they going to limit the number? Are they going to have a reservation system? Like, what does that look like? Universal Studios doesn't do the reservation system. So I'm interested to see if maybe that's something they implement to keep the crowds at a manageable level because this place is going to be absolutely packed. Um, I assume that this is going to be the most popular theme park in the United States for years to come, um, just from what we've seen and what we've experienced with some of the other lands that have been added to universal parks around the world. So yeah, I think that we're, we're in for quite a ride and I can't wait to share more with you when we get those details for tickets. So we will probably do a whole episode on getting to the park, 
tickets, parking, and different things like that. Um, as the time starts to approach and we start to get more and more details about how much that stuff will cost, obviously annual passes, I think, are going to change. They're going to have the four park option. Um, I think there will be uh, a limited number of annual passes that they sell at first. So we'll keep you updated as soon as we know. You'll know. Um, you can even go over to TikTok. Um, I've tried to keep up more and more with X um, and on Facebook, but hopefully as they start to release more and more for Epic Universe, we're really going to key into those, I think, and maybe do some lives and talk a little bit about the ticket system and, and how this all works as we ramp up to Epic Universe being added into the Central Florida area. And it is coming along very quickly. Um, again, they have not announced a specific day or season, which is going to open time of year. Um, I know some people were hinting at maybe summer of 2025 because they've got the summer crowds coming. Um, I've heard some people even say, I don't think I'll be ready um, by summer uh, 2025. Some people say that it's on track to be done early and in the spring. So I guess we'll find out. Um, I don't think there's ever really a good timeline until we get really down to the nitty gritty and, and they really just start to put in final details into things. So We'll see. Keep you updated on that. Uh, Epic Universe did start as a doodle on a napkin nearly a decade ago, inspired by the heavens, stars, and constellations. The theme park offers an entirely new level of experience by immersing guests into the five fully themed worlds. And we do have all those worlds, and we'll get into what those all look like and the names of those. Um, but before we do that, we'll probably launch into the resort, and then we'll get into what is included with um, the park. So... Uh, how do you get to Epic Universe? Instead of parking the main parking garage and accessing the park through Universal City Walk, you'll drive directly to where the new theme park is located. There will be complimentary transportation connecting the entire Orlando uh, Universal Orlando Resort destination. They already have this system in place for Volcano Bay. You park at the parking garages for City Walk. Um, I think it's on the first floor for Volcano Bay. The bus takes you from there into Volcano Bay, drops you off at the bus stop, and then you get back on the bus stop, and, or you go back to the bus stop to get back to your car. Um, it's going to be the same way with uh, Epic Universe. They're going to have an Epic Universe place where they um, they might even put it downstairs with the um, Volcano Bay, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, I like that system. If you're in between and you don't really want to drive or you don't have the option to drive, uh, a lot of people come down here from different states or don't bring their car. They fly in. They don't have a way to get to Epic Universe. Um, the resorts are going to have buses to Epic Universe as well, um, so you don't have to worry about that. And, yeah, I, they haven't really announced any other transportation methods that they're going to have for the theme parks. But um, that's always, I think, on, on these parks' minds is, like, how can we get people to our parks more conveniently? So. It is nice that they have a main parking area for Epic Universe. Um, and you can actually just walk right into the park. So there's no city walk that you'll have to go to. Um, you will, of course, have to go through security. But it will be, I think, an easier walk and manageable to get into Epic Universe from the parking lot. So um, Epic Universe is made up of five different worlds, worlds all connected through Celestial Park, which we'll talk about what that is. The first world you'll experience once you uh, walk through the Emerald Gate and Kronos device as the entrance to Epic Universe. In our story, or sorry, in our story, Kronos is the giant machine used to harness the energy of the universe that powers all of Celestial Park, allowing for um, allowing us to open portals to other worlds. So, if you've seen pictures, you know what Celestial Park looks like. Um, it is uh, a beautiful. I guess almost like futuristic central park kind of place. Um, and we'll get into what, like showing you what, what celestial park looks like. But if you look at the very beginning of celestial park, you'll see, and at the very beginning of the, of the uh, Epic universe, the entrance, you'll have what's called Kronos. And again, it's like the big green tower thing that's built. And it's got like the five individual worlds on like little um, look like coins almost. And they're collecting energy and you'll actually see like lightning and stuff like that, like collecting all that energy and that static and that motion. And it's kind of moving around. And then you'll see it kind of going through the parks as you walk around, which we'll get into that too. And you can really see it through like dark universe. Um, but you'll see like these currents going through and opening up and ripping open the world of these portals where we get to go into some of these lands like Harry Potter, the fantastic beast and going to super Nintendo world, dark universe, how to train your dragon Isle at Burke. Like it's going to be a lot of fun. Each of them have their own little portals and they're 
decorated as such um, as the land themed as the land. So it's your first initial reaction or interaction with the land and getting transported into these different worlds. So sorry if I call it lands. I'm so used to calling them lands because of um, Islands of Adventure, Universal Studios and Disney. Like I've just gotten so accustomed to calling them lands, but these are called worlds. So we will see if I can uh, eliminate that from the, from the vocab. Once you're in Celestial Park, you'll have access to all four portals. Um, and you'll also have access at Epic Universe to three resorts, the three hotels that are being built. And that's what we're going to start with. And we're going to start over in one of the uh, resorts that we got details about. And that is Universal Stella Nova Resort. So let's talk a little bit about that and what this resort includes. Because these are some really exciting details that we've gotten and I think a really immersive experience as we're going to Epic Universe. And these open on January 1st of 2025. Universal Stella Nova Resort, sorry, Universal Stella Nova Resort, inspired by the infinite vastness of unknown universe where galaxies spiral ever forward and outward uh, and unknown worlds revolve around unnamed stars. Universal Stella Nova Resort opens on January 21st, 2025, um, where you'll take off for an amazing adventure at Universal Studios Orlando. I think I said during January 1st, it's January 21st for these resorts. Um, this is the logo uh, for Stella Nova Resort. It looks, uh, and you can see the colors are very gal or like a galactic or galaxy themed. Um, I am really excited about these resorts because they look beautiful from the outside. And let me just give you an idea. So if you're watching it, um, you'll be able to see it, obviously, on YouTube. But it's got almost like this sequence look to it. It's very, like, rainbow colored. Um, and Stella Nova is going to be the one in the back right corner. Um, and this is, I mean, if you have not been down in that area where, you, where you've driven down there by Epic Universe, you can see these from the road. They are so very close to the road that goes through there. And they are beautiful resorts. They they shimmer in the sun. Um, I've not seen them at night. So I'm interested to kind of see what they look like all lit up because they're very colorful. They're very vibrant. They've got like a weird shape. They're, it's almost like they've got like metal scale. It almost looks like a fish. Like it's got, like, it almost looks like it's got metal scales. Um, and these resorts are massive. Um, they're very big hotels. Um, they are... Uh, very well spaced um, from each other. Uh, they have a great or will have a great view, I think, of Epic Universe. So you'll actually be able to see into the park from here. Um, as far as proximity to the entrance, I'm assuming um, you could walk if you really wanted to, but I'm assuming they'll have some transportation available to you as well to get to Epic Universe from Stella Nova. Universal Stella Nova Resort will be located at the future site of the new Epic Universe theme park that opens in 2025. Universal Orlando's current theme parks and Universal City Walk will be accessible um, from these uh, new hotels via convenient complimentary shuttles using enclosed smoke vessels to, um, uh, sorry, we're getting, sorry, I'm getting ready to launch in the bar area. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think these are, are beautiful resorts, um, but we're kind of getting into the details here. Um, as you can see, this is the inside to the lobby area, and it is a beautiful place. Um, it's very, uh, it's got very white um, interior, so it's got a lot of lights. Um, it's kind of mixed in with that dark marble on the floor. A lot of sunlight. It looks very spaced out, and, and no pun intended. Um, it's got like the galactic theme in behind the um, front desk. Uh, they've got like a bar that you can see over in that area. And that's what I was getting ready to read off um, before I had to stop because I was like, I think we've got a lobby picture here before we get into the bar area. Um, but this looks like a great place to kind of hang out. Very um, contemporary looking uh, furniture, uh, good looking space, kind of a, uh, an open air space that you can kind of hang out in as you're waiting for your rooms to be ready or waiting on the shuttles um, or just kind of hanging out, uh, taking a phone call or whatever you need to do. Relax a little bit in the air conditioning because it is hot here in Florida. But that is a look at the Stella Nova Resort um, lobby area. And this is called the Nova Bar, using enclosed smoke vessels to infuse in big or intriguing flavor profiles into the cocktails. 
Nova Bar creates craft drinks instilled with various smoky elements for a uniquely delicious experience. So I am not uh, <laughs> the biggest drinker. So um, bars, and it's always funny to try to have me explain um, the different drinks. Uh, but I believe it's the Manhattan that they do this with, where they where they smoke certain elements like fruit or wood or anything to kind of flavor cinnamon sticks, like to, to flavor different drinks. And you kind of put it in that cup, you light it on fire. It kind of takes in that aroma and that smell, and then it infuses in with the in flavors that you're adding in with the liquor. Um, I'm assuming this is going to have some out of the world looking drinks. I'm hoping that's what they're going for here, where you've got like the big domes of, um, I don't know, nitrogen sitting on drinks. You've got colorful drinks that light up or change colors when you dump things in them. And um, I'm assuming that's what they're going for here. Um, they'll probably have your normal craft beers um, from the area or draft beers or um, wines, spirits, anything like that, that you might enjoy from the bar. Um, I'm assuming that you'll have a food menu, um, a very limited one, but a bar menu is always available usually at these um, resort bars. This is actually in the lobby. So if you go back and you look, I guess I can flip back. If you look back here, um, if you're looking on the YouTube video, um, back in the back right hand corner, it looks like that's where the Stella Nova bar is going to be. Um, for those of you that are in the audio version, um, this is going to be uh, a very spacious bar. It's going to have some nice uh, like lounge seating inside of the lobby that you can enjoy some drinks and maybe some food or a quick bite to eat. Uh, it does overlook, it looks like the pool area with these huge windows from floor to ceiling. Um, it's a very opening and welcoming space, very clean, very modern. Um, I think it looks, honestly, it looks a lot like, I think uh, it's called Aventura over there. Um, looks very similar. It's kind of like that color palette, that white and blue. Um, which I think Universal leans heavily into some purples, some blues, some greens. Uh, again, very galactic. Um, so they're going to have a lot of those different colors uh, throughout. The next one up on the list is going to be the Cosmos Cafe and Market. So this is a three meal quick service restaurant offering American classics like burgers, paninis, fried chicken and pastas. It also offers several grab and go options. So this is like your quick service restaurants that you have at every single resort here, I think, in Orlando. Um, but I think they're going to have a unique menu. They usually do really well with their food um, as far as Universal is concerned. I'm excited to see what kind of different flavors they add here. Are there going to be unique dishes, snacks, desserts to Stella Nova? Like, are they going to really lean heavily into kind of like the space theme? Um, are they going to make them look very futuristic? You know, what, what does that look like? Are there desserts that have kind of like that, the stars and the galaxy on them? Um, you know, I, I always think about the different things that Universal is really starting to kind of lean into. Um, and I guess this is a good place to kind of mention it to start this video. So Universal Studios, when they opened Harry Potter and the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, I really did feel like Universal was making an effort to finally get to the point where the theme park really was an immersive experience. But like Epic Universe, and when they've talked about these different creative elements throughout the resorts and through the parks, when we get into the parks, they've done such a good job of emphasizing how important it was for them to get down to where the creative elements and being in these environments are going to make the fans feel like they are part of these worlds, part of these different themes, living in space, living in Harry Potter, really experiencing Super Nintendo like you're in the video games. Like they really want to make sure that they're immersing guests because that's where people really have fun. And they've, you know, and I hate to always bring in Disney, but Disney did such a good job when they first started to immerse guests into these experiences that they're having. And now Universal is doing such a wonderful job. It's really started, I think, with HHN. Like Halloween Horror Nights is so well done. The creative team that has worked on Halloween Horror Nights have always knocked it out of the park, it seems. And I think this is kind of carried over to Universal Creative. Universal Creative, they really haven't been busy since I think it was 1998 when they opened Islands of Adventure. So, you know, yeah, they've, they've been limited. They've opened DreamWorks Land, obviously. And, and that's, that was kind of a cool sneak peek as to maybe some of the technology and stuff that we're getting at Epic Universe. But I think with this new project, they really said, how can we change the game? And I think they're starting with Epic Universe and Universal Studios. Um, and they're starting with these resorts. They're building this into the theme park. They're really making sure that this theme park 
is the one park that everybody wants to go to in the world. And I think they've accomplished it so far with all of the things that they've released. I can't wait to experience it. But again, it goes into all this detail, right? The, the reason why I went on that rant was it's all about detail. And if Universal Studios can, you know, kind of capture that in a bottle where you feel like you're experiencing these things and you're living in an alternative universe, I think that's where Universal really has to lean in. And I feel like they might be able to do this through food, through attractions, through meet and greets, through the different things they do as far as entertainment. So we'll see. But this is the Cosmos Cafe and Market. If they've got food that they can really, you know, make kind of funky or weird, look very, you know, galactic or almost like futuristic, I think that's where they lean in here. Um, but this is just the quick service. They haven't really announced if there's going to be many table service restaurants as far as like um, making reservations and having table service um, in these two, but it might change. Like I think they've got like the, the they're all attached to the pool bars. So they've got, each of the pool bars have like a restaurant too. Um, I'm kind of interested to see how that all works because the concept art, while it is pretty close to probably what they're accurately going to build in the theme parks, I think some things obviously change, but also it's very limited, like the pool bar. And I'll show you what I mean by the pool bars. Um, it, it just shows like the outdoor area that you would see at the pool. So we're going to move on to that right now. Um, so we can talk a little bit about it, but this is the pool area at Stella Nova. And as you can see, um, very big pool, 10,000 square feet pool, kids splash pad, outdoor games, a relaxing hot tub, fire pit and poolside movies, weather permitting. So we are getting a huge area back there um, for the uh, Stella Nova pool area and the pool resort. You can see the splash pad over there on the left-hand side. You've got this beautiful um, cutout of the different trees. Um, the water looks so blue in the concept there. I love I love how they do water at, um, at pools and like in theme parks um, because it always looks so blue. Um, but the colors just pop here. I love the palm trees, love the big palm trees, great seating. Um, Really, I think just going to be a great place to kind of sit and relax at the pool. Pretty big area back there for each of the pools that I've seen in the concept art. So um, they are going to have a lot of space. Galaxy Bar and Galaxy Grill is the next thing up. And this is what I was talking about. So you can see there's kind of like the um, almost like a lounge area, like back here in the back. And then you've got like the bar seating. It's kind of a weird mix. Like it, you know, it it's all outdoors, it seems like from this concept art, and this is what I mean, like sometimes concept art is left, um, I guess not minimalistic, but like concept art sometimes doesn't reveal the whole truth because like what's back here, right? You know, um, is there an indoor area? Because I, I just find it strange that they would have outdoor restaurants. And, but I mean, Disney does this, I guess, but the fact that they don't have like a sit down restaurant inside some of these resorts, I, I felt like, you know, that's always something Disney's pride itself in. And I thought Universal was going to start to go that way. And, and these are all Lowe's hotels, by the way. Um, and Lowe's is the is the, the resort company, I think, that owns, I want to say they own, do they own Portofino? I think it's Portofino they own, um, the Italian one hotel over there. Um, but Lowe's is the one that operates these hotels. This is a great bar. I mean, I'm not knocking it, um, but I do wonder are they going to have indoor seating options to maybe take some food? Um, is there a place you can go inside and order food besides at the at the the lobby bars, right? So, it'll be interesting to see Galaxy Bar and Galaxy Grill featuring a full service bar, beer, wine, and a separate grill with a menu that includes burgers, quesadillas, and salads. Great, great stuff to eat outside, right um, by the pool. Um, just some quick, um, easy bar food. Um, that, that a lot of people like. Um, so it's not not too unique as far as the menu, at least from what it looks like from just the small details that have been released. But I think we'll get more and more, but I do like the outdoor seating area. I think it's a beautiful area. It's got the fans. It's a nice seating area like covered here. So if it rains, I think that's a really good option. It's got that nice purple kind of mixed in, purple and blacks. The bar looks a lot of fun. The seating again is very contemporary, very modern. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think it's a good place to kind of sit, relax, hang out by the pool, grab something to eat, um, and then maybe head into parks or off on your next adventure or back to the pool. <laughs> um, let's get into some room details. So these are pretty similar. Um, the two uh, hotels that we're going to talk about today, that the room details are pretty darn similar, if not the same. 
Uh, step into a tranquil space that serves as a um, as your place to touch down after a day of thrills in the parks, or just anytime you want to come back and chill for a bit before launching into your next adventure. With two queen beds, the room sleeps up to four and is 314 square feet. So this is just the queen room. They they only had one room listed for each of the hotels. I think it's just your standard queen room, um, queen size beds. Um, <clears throat> honestly, not that impressed with the <laughs> hotel rooms. I think it will look better in person, but this is very, I mean, I guess the one thing that has it, it has it going for it is like this backdrop back behind the beds and the headboards. Um, the window is kind of cool, but other than that, like, <clears throat> I don't know. I just, I felt like there would be more, I don't know. Um, and I know universal is very good at, at designing hotel rooms and they always, I, I always think they look beautiful on the inside. So I might be being too harsh here, but I don't know, maybe because of how good Epic Universe is, I was expecting these rooms to look really cool, um, have some like more like star looking things on the ceiling, even though it's just your standard room. Um, but really, again, it's just that window that looks like a, a space shuttle uh, window. And then you've got like that backdrop of the galaxy and like kind of like a shooting, it almost looks like a shooting star up there. Maybe the lights do something fun. Um, but then you get your TV, you got your dresser. Uh, and then just kind of a standard room other than that. So I don't know. I thought I was expecting more, but their rooms are always really good. They're always really nice. It does have a price listed for these standard rooms. Right now, they're starting at $134 a night, which is a pretty good deal. Um, that's a pretty good uh, price for uh, Central Florida, um, especially some of the resorts for the theme parks. This is actually a really good deal. So I, I like that. It says starting at though, because it'll flex. So as it gets more busy, I'd probably go up to like 200 and something a night, but pretty decent. It's got a mini refrigerator, uh, flat panels, uh, TV. Um, it can, you can upgrade to a poolside room. So this is, I'm assuming uh, looking out over the woods or back towards like the street. Cause I think the poolside view, I think the one in the poolside view is the one that's towards Epic universe. Um, but yeah, you can uh, you can enjoy these things. Um, they'll have a gym. They'll have uh, recreation. They'll have uh, I think they have laundry as well. Um, but just your standard um, kind of room, I guess. I don't know. I, I just wasn't as impressed with these as I thought I would be. I'm impressed with the rest of the resort, but the rooms were kind of underwhelming to me. And then a look at the bathroom. Nothing too special. I mean, it, the I guess the lighting around the mirror is the only thing that caught my eye when I first saw these. So I don't know. I, I, I did. I thought they would go. I thought they'd go a little bit more risky with the way they look. Um, but they're just very modern. Uh, kind of look like kind of look like you are in a spaceship. Um, I again, I hate to compare it, but it kind of looks gal or, uh, Galactic Star Cruiserish. Um, but yeah. <clears throat> oh well. Um, yeah, I think that's it for Stella Nova. Let's move on to Terra Luna, which is the other resort. It's on the bottom left. If you go back to that picture right here on the left-hand side, that is going to be, um, actually, yeah, I think that's the one that's Terra Luna. Um, they look almost identical, so it's really hard. I can't remember which one's which, um, but I believe Epic Universe is out this way. So, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I always forget, like, directionally where Epic universe is. Cause it, like now that I think about it, like the two resorts kind of sit on that road, kind of like this, like that road that it's going through there. And then Epic universe is back behind them. So um, some of them, I think will have views of the actual theme park, but they're, they're, uh, they're pretty far off of the actual main theme park. You're not gonna be able to see much um, just some stuff in the distance, but yeah. So Terra Luna and Terra Luna, they introduced this and it says, inspired by the thrill of exploring the unknown and pushing the limits of discovery, discover your launch pad and landing zone for relaxation and recharging between the fun. You'll find the lobby otherworldly where fresh contemporary surroundings highlighted in golds and greens are com comfortably spacious. I love this lobby. This one is the better of the two. Um, I think because of how open this is like the other one kind of had like a weird wall right here where that bar was. And I think this is where it's bar is back here in this area. And this wall does kind of section that off. But for some reason, I think just having this huge space right here in the lobby area in front of the front desk where you got seating places to kind of lounge around. I like that better. I love the lights, like the blue. Almost, again, they look like moons, I guess. Um, 
We got lighting up here that I really enjoy. I love those real long lights kind of hang down that far. And then you got the nice can lights up in the ceiling. And again, this looks just so sleek, so modern. It's got the wood in the background back there behind the, um, like the paneling back there behind the front desk. Um, <clears throat> I really do. I, 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 as soon as I saw this one's lobby, I was like, oh, I love that lobby more than the other one. This one feels much more spaced out. Feels like uh, a lot bigger. Feels like a more clean, more um, cohesive looking lobby. Um, but yeah, I can't wait to look at these hotels. Um, I really can't. So we'll move on. Uh, the Luna Bar is what its lobby bar is called. Again, I like this bar a lot more than the other one. I think because of just how open it is back here, you got the great lighting up here with the big bay window, or sorry, the big floor to ceiling windows back here that kind of hour overlook the outdoor area. Um, you've got the TVs up here with the bar. You got that paneling back here. Um, very vibrant looking rug um, down here, a carpet. It's got the blues and the purples. It's got a cool shaped, like almost like a U shaped bar here um, with, with great seating, kind of that brown that matches in great with that light color of the, almost the wood there that's kind of holding up the the bar type the bar top so yeah this one I, I like this a lot it's got the nice lounge right here it's got great seating um i don't know i it just was really drawn to this one um this features craft croc cocktails and all the classics along with beer and wine again i think they'll have some like small bites probably at this bar um but a great place to stop in and enjoy. I love that they have um, lobby bars because trying to think, there's not really many resorts anymore that have lobby bars. Like they've got lounges, but not not like bars in the lobby. Um, but these are great. I really do. I can't wait to see um, these two lobbies. Universal Terra Luna Resort offers a wide variety of options that include a three um, meal quick service restaurant. I'm not going to lie to you, I had no idea what I was looking at when I first pulled this one. This one is called Omega Cafe and Market. Um, yeah, I had no clue. I was like, is this, what is this? Is this like, a? is this the lobby? What is this? But it it wasn't until I looked over here in the back right-hand corner, you can see at the top, they've got menus. I was like, oh, that's their quick service restaurant. Um, this is a very unique looking cafe as compared to the other one. Like, again, I, I like this one better. Um, Omega has kind of that open space. It's got the huge windows that kind of wrap around and that U shape, um, almost like a semicircle. Um, I just love the Brown that kind of, uh, I guess like almost like waves or synergy through, I don't know. It just makes it feel very like it flows, you know, it's very open flows right into the next room, into the next room, into the next room. Like it, it just, it has a really good look to it. Um, those huge windows are going to bring a lot of light into the resorts, which I always enjoy. I always think that the resorts that have the big, big, big windows are always a, a huge hit here in Florida because it, there's just so much sun that comes through. It does get warm, but um, through those windows. But uh, anytime that you can show off the sun and the beauty of Florida and just how green everything is typically, I don't think you can beat it. So this is going to be a lot of fun. I love this. Uh, it's got, again, burgers, panini, fried chicken and pasta. So the same as the other quick service restaurant. I'm assuming that their uh, menus are going to be the same. Um, there might be a couple things that are different from it, but it sounds like they're going to be exactly the same. This is their pool area. So this is Terra Luna's pool area. And as you can see, um, very big pool. Um, it is a zero entry pool, which I don't think the other one is. Um, it does have a hot tub a lounge and tabletop seating in the pool area and select outdoor games. So they do have a bar out here and we'll show you what that looks like. But this area, I honestly, I think I like the other one better. I like the other pool better. Um, I think because this one's kind of oddly shaped, uh, it's kind of hard to follow with my eyes. And again, it's so hard to tell from concept art. until so you're actually there like looking at the physical thing because so much is left out of concept art because they don't want to give it all away. But I like the zero entry. I think that's that's kind of unique and interesting um, for a universal resort. So I'm all for it. Love the palm trees. Again, very similar to uh, Stella Luna. Um, so Terra Luna, Stella Luna, that's a lot of fun to say. Back and forth, back and forth. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, sorry, not Stella Luna, Stella Nova. Um, but yeah, I like this one. I like this pool. The Moonrise Bar and Moonrise Grill is the quick service bar feature featuring rum drinks, 
beer, wine, and a separate grill with a menu full of poolside favorites like burgers, quesadillas, salads, and more. Again, I think a very similar menu to the other pool bar as well. Get that same experience. Love the lighting in here. Um, don't like this bar as much. Feels very like uh, just kind of standard boxy looking. Um, the bar doesn't go to the end of the walls, so that kind of throws me off a little bit. Um, I guess really good seating. If it started to rain, you got that cover. Um, but again, just kind of your typical looks like pool bar. Nothing too crazy about it, but I think definitely going to be a huge hit. The pool bars always are. So if you're visiting, make sure you're aware that there is a pool bar down there. I'm sure you'll be aware. <laughs> so uh, room details, again, they look identical to um, what Stella Nova looks like. Um, Terra Luna is going to have similar space window, um, that kind of space galactic look in the, the headboard area. Um, and then again, there's a look at the bathroom. So uh, again, I just, I thought, I thought, and, and I, they're going to go after it with the, with the other hotel that we're going to talk about called Helios. But uh, I, I just thought that maybe there would be more variance between the two. I thought that they would go a little bit more extreme with the rooms and make them look a little different, but I get it. I mean, it's playing it pretty safe here. Um, I think it looks clean. It looks, it looks contemporary. It looks um, very put together, very good. Um, I don't know. I, I just, I thought it would be better. That's all I'll say. All right. Moving on to a hotel. We don't really have any information on I'm interested to see when they drop this stuff, because um, this is the hotel that most people are going to want to stay in. The other two that will, um, but this is like, this is the icon, I guess, if you're talking about hotels for Universal Studios, this is the one that you see now and you're like, wow, that thing is impressive. It's beautiful. It's got great colors. Um, the the lights when they're on are going to be wonderful. The views into the park, it actually sits in the park, which is uh, different for Universal Studios. We don't have, we don't actually have any um, hotels at any of the resorts currently in Walt Disney World, um, Epcot, SeaWorld, or sorry, not Epcot, Universal Studios, SeaWorld, um, and Disney World that have, I believe, like a uh, resort that actually backs up into a park. This is the first one stateside, so um, as far as um, this side of, of the Mississippi, I know Disneyland has theirs, but this is the first one in Florida that backs up into um, the theme park, so That'll be cool. This one is again called Universal Helios Grand Hotel. More details uh, will come. Enter a divine escape with dazzling views of epic universe. Beautiful details of a celestial patterns and um, constellations adorn the hotel with elegant Mediterranean-inspired feel. Opening in 2025, the unique draw of the Universal Studios Helios Grand Hotel is that it is located within Celestial Park inside of Epic Universe because of its convenient location. Guests staying at the hotel will be dedicated entrance. We'll have a dedicated entrance to Universal Studios, um, Epic Universe. The unique draw, um, again, is going to be that exactly. It's going to be that it backs up to the theme park. You're going to be able to walk right in within five minutes. You'll probably be inside of the theme park, uh, which is absolutely amazing. Um, the, again, they don't do this in Florida. This is one of a kind, and I can't wait to experience it. We will update as we get more details for Helios. We just don't have any more details as far as what it's going to be. I'm assuming there's going to be a restaurant or two inside of this park, or sorry, inside of this resort, but we will update you when that comes. Let's talk about Celestial Park. Celestial Park is the cosmic heart of Epic Universe, um, where wondrous discoveries await among the lush greenery, Tree-lined walkways and dancing fountains become your cosmic journey of discovery and a world between worlds, full of sensory details for all to enjoy together. These are just smaller descriptions that I pulled offline, sometimes off the Epic Universe website, sometimes off of their social media sites, um, wherever they kind of, uh, sometimes off their blog. Um, so if you haven't gone over to Discover Universal, the, the blog, or the podcast. They actually just released today, Celestial Parks podcast. I didn't listen to it, so I'm probably going to be missing some things here because I didn't listen to it, but they did release a about a 35-minute podcast, I think I believe it was, about Celestial Park and all the details that have been released. Maybe they're just going over that kind of stuff, um, but I did actually just see it pop up on my feed right before I got on to record this, but 
we're going to start with the attractions and then we're going to move into some of the other parts of Celestial Park. Um, and this is what Celestial Park is going to be and where it is going to be. So right when you um, come into the park, if you've got the video version, it is the first thing that you're going to see when you go underneath Kronos, which is the big green tower thing that's absorbing energy. And Celestial Park, like, like it said, it's got a lot of green spaces, a lot of... Um, very galactic looking space uh, and, and different dazzles and colors and splashing water and lights and all sorts of fun things. Um, it almost looks like a really, really nice <laughs> Central Park with really cool features that Central Park could never pull off. So um, it, is, it is beautiful. I cannot wait to show you some of the concept art here with it. Um, but again, that is Celestial Park right when you enter. And this is Kronos. So again, Kronos is that tower um, that does collect the energy that allows us to open the portals to different worlds. And it is uh, a beautiful entrance. It still kind of has a little bit of the nod of the Universal Studios entrance area, which is pretty cool. But as you can see, Kronos is also, um, if you're looking at the video, if not, it looks just like the other portals inside, but the other portals are a little bit smaller. But if you look at this concept art as well in the YouTube version, you can see the different portals sticking up out of the theme park. So this is a great shot. I, I hope like we can kind of get almost um, a higher level look or view. I, I mean, assuming this is kind of like from the parking lot area back in the back, maybe there's a parking garage up there. Um, but I love this view of where you can see the Helios Hotel and you can see the different um, portals that take you into the other four parts of the park. So this is awesome. I love this so much. This is such a beautiful picture. And then kind of looking on the backside. Um, so this is actually, if you're facing the entrance, heading out of the park, going back towards Kronos. Um, and you can see there's like that water fountain back there with a nice figure inside of it that looks very futuristic, very modern. A lot of good lights and color and water. Um, I'm assuming the soundtrack is going to be beautiful in this area. This is an area like I can't wait to hang out in just because I feel like it, like everywhere I feel um, there's a familiar piece. Maybe maybe not Isle Burke, but with Harry Potter, like there's a very familiar feeling with it. Even when I was getting the new concept art, it felt very familiar to me. Um, Super Nintendo, because it exists elsewhere, like we, we kind of know what it's going to look like. Um, I guess Donkey Kong, we won't really know. But um, and then with Dark Universe, like we we've had our interaction with the the Dark Universe and um, characters and the Universal monsters. They feel a, bit, a little bit more familiar and some of their attractions, I think, speak a little bit more to the familiarity with the theme parks. And we'll get into what I mean by that. I think their uh, their attraction over there is a lot like Forbidden Journey as far as like the feel of it, um, if you know what I mean. Uh, but yeah, this is I, I can't wait to see Celestial Park just because I think it is very unique to what we experience um, and it, again, you can just look at it. It's so it's so beautiful, like you're not going to be able to get down in this area, but the views and like the colors and the green and the plants and the floral with the flames and the restaurant in the back back there. It kind of, this looks this almost looks identical. If it's like a futuristic Central Park, and I love Central Park, I'm not I'm not saying that it's like a oh it's just a city park because some people find that offensive. Um, this is it's so pretty. Like this is so tranquil. I can just oh I can almost hear this picture, which is crazy to say, but. The ma imagine this. This is like what launches you into Epic Universe. And then you go into these other worlds that are just so out, uh, you know, outlandish and uh, otherworldly. <laughs> like, and you start here, like it, it doesn't, it's going to be, and at night, I think it takes on a whole different, um, I guess, persona, I guess we can say. So I'm very, very excited about this. I can't wait to see this all come to life in Celestial Park. Now let's talk about the first attraction. So the first one we're going to talk about is Constellation Carousel. There is no height requirement for this one. Climb aboard this imaginative carousel where the cosmic energy of the universe enables guests to ride the constell constellations themselves. Guest carriages uh, include celestial lions, dragons, peacocks, and more. Each car carriage turns 360 degrees while lifting riders up to six feet in the air. Celestial Music and color dazzle your senses as you whirl and swirl together through the Milky Way. Um, the concept art to this thing, like you can kind of see it here. This is going to be a very unique experience. I think if I'm picturing it correctly, it's going to kind of work like, uh, again, I don't like to compare the two, but it's the only ride I can think of like this that's kind of trackless. Um, I think like Luigi's where it kind of like over in Disneyland where it, it dances a little bit and you've got like the magnetic kind of 
feel to it or like where the tracks are that kind of intertwine with one another. Um, I think that, you know, this is going, I mean, they're going to not spin, but they turn, right. They, they kind of just make this 360 degree turn as you're going through and kind of doing this elegant dance going up in six feet, like I'm six feet. That's, that's tall. Like that's a, that's a pretty high, um, uh, I guess height. it's a pretty big height to, to kind of take you up there with. I can't think of how to say that. Um, you're going to be taken up pretty high. So uh, I'm interested. It's going to have great music. Again, I think this is going to be the land where the music is really beautiful. So looking forward to that constellation carousel. I think at night again, at night, this place is going to be amazing. So I can't wait to see what it looks like. Stardust Racers. This is one that I think a lot of people are going to be going to right when they get in the park. <laughs> this is going to be a very popular attraction. So Star Stardust Racers, 48 inches to ride. Um, share a race across the cosmos on Stardust Racers, a breathtaking dual launch coaster, reaching incredible speeds of, of oh, well, I about said 162. You will not be going 162 miles per hour. You will be going uh, 62 miles per hour. Board a comet and rocket. Um, to the furthest reaches of stars at heights up to 133 feet along 5,000 feet of track. Race along an inverted crisscross known as the Celestial Spin in a dazzling display of blazing colors and uh, ethereal, is that, is that ethereal? Um, music. With no external track lighting at night, the fully illuminated ride vehicles appear as comets shooting across this night sky above Celestial Park. So this doesn't have external lights, so it doesn't have anything lighting up the track, but I think you're going to be able to see. So I'm assuming it's kind of like Rock and Roller Coaster, not Rock and Good Night. Rip Ride Rocket, it's got like the colorful like uh, bottom of the, the vehicle. I think the whole thing's going to do that on this ride. It is a dueling coaster, which is back. Dueling Dragons was such a popular attraction. So they're like, you know what? Let's bring back a dueling roller coaster because that's what the people want. And the people are excited. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this because it does go in a lot of loops. And it is a long track. That's the thing I noticed about these roller coasters in these lands. They're huge. Like These are long roller coasters. So um, I think Velociraptor or Velocicoaster was the... Um, the start to those really long tracks for uh, roller coasters at Universal Studios, and they're keeping up with Stardust Racers. If you have the chance, definitely go check out the, um, I guess it's called the fly through, where it shows Stardust Racers at night, and it looks, it does, they look like little shooting stars intertwining and, and doing a dance. It's, it is, again, I, I think this park is going to have two different feels, one during the day and one at night. So definitely check it out uh, at both times of the day. Onward, and we go into what is called Astronomica. At the center of Celestial Park lies Astronomica, an interactive wet play attraction designed as a compass rose that points to the portals and attractions around Epic. A pro tip, make sure you stop at night too as Astron Astronomica comes alive with light, color, and music. So a splash pad that turns into a night show. <laughs> this is going to be so cool. Um, I'm not going to be in the splash pad. I don't go in the splash pads, but uh, yeah, I think this will be a lot of fun for the kiddos, especially during the heat of summer. And I think is going to be um, a very, very interactive attraction and place to go. Um, I don't know. I kind of pictured for some reason like Moana, but uh, like with stars. So I'm interested. There's no concept art to this, but we'll see. I'm really, I think the fly through shows it at some point, but I, I wasn't going to go through and like take screenshots of the fly through. But if you want to go check it out, definitely check it out. But I think this is going to be an interesting little uh, interactive attraction that is designed inside of Epic Universe. So, where do we go next? Well, of course, food. Atlantic Restaurant, nestled in the middle of Celestial Park, Atlantic, is Chef Martinez's precious gem. The restaurant is surrounded by the shimmering waters of Neptune's pool and has Florida uh, ceiling Victorian glass walls. It gives our guests the illusion of dining in and out of this world. Glass Aquarium, says Chef Martinez. The name probably already gave it away, but you'll be able to find the freshest seafood and typical and not so typical surf and surf options on the menu. This screams like Mediterranean food too um, because of Helios. Because of this tie with Kronos, 
I, it just feels like Celestial Park's going to lean heavily into kind of like uh, Asian and Mediterranean and very fresh food, um, seafood for this one, Atlantic, obviously the ocean. But uh, yeah, th- this is going to be um, a very popular restaurant. The windows and the views out onto Celestial Park and onto Neptune's Pool. I'm sure Neptune's Pool does some interactive crazy stuff too. Um, yeah. I can't wait for this one. I can't wait for menus to be released. This looks so good. It's not number one on my list, though. Number one on my list is next, as far as restaurants. Like this one is a this one's a good one. I will try this one, but the next one is the one that I'm most excited for. And let's get to it. It is called the Blue Dragon Pan Asian Restaurant. This screams Tokyo to me. Um, this screams China and japan and southeast asia and all well all all asia i guess um (laughs) it has it all the cuisine it's got asian and uh, japanese chinese korean like thai maybe i don't know they they've got all these things tied into the same restaurant um different cuisines from different countries i think this is going to be one of the best restaurants in all of universal studios and I can't wait to try it. Um, again, Blue Dragon is legitimate a flavor bomb. That's what it says. That's crazy. <laughs> like uh, the fact that it's going to have all these Asian countries participating, China, Korea, Japan, like those are some of my favorite, favorite cuisines. I can't wait to try that. Um, but yeah, staying true to the electric neon dragons that snake the interior of the dining room, the restaurant has a vibrant and delectable menu. Our guests will have the chance to enjoy flavors from China, Southeast Asia, and Japan, all while dining under the constellations as lanterns dance overhead in this beautiful indoor courtyard, says Chef Martinez. If you need a break from the bustling environment, grab a seat at the Cozy Tiger Bar for a drink or two. I love Asian cuisine. Um, it just, the atmosphere here is just going to be so amazing. Like that indoor courtyard. I love that. I'm hoping that we get some nice trees inside. We might have some of those, um, what are they called? They're like the, uh, what are, I'm blanking on what they're called. It's the trees in Washington, DC, Logan. What are they called? It's the blooming, um, I'll come up with it soon. The ch- cherry blossom trees. All right. Is that what they're called? Um, but I think having those in there and then having maybe some bamboo, like uh, it just, uh, this place is going to be so amazing. Um, again, I love Asian food. Um, I am a uh, quarter Asian, right? Yeah. Quarter, I guess. Um, I'm Filipino. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I, I love Asian food. I think it's going to be fantastic. Maybe some ramen, lamb sushi. I don't know. Donna noodles. I love Donna noodles. Yeah. So that is uh, going to be it for the restaurants for now. I'm sure they'll have some quick service options and maybe some other restaurants they haven't announced yet, but those are all the details we have as far as the restaurants are concerned. I lied. I'm just kidding. The Oak and Star Tavern um, serving barbecue and Pizza Moon serving a variety of pizzas. Um, sorry, Pizza Moon's a restaurant and this, the, Ar- the Oak and Star Tavern are a barbecue restaurant. Sorry, I got my tongue twisted. Um, Yeah, those are, I think, sounds like quick service restaurants, if I had to guess. But those those are the restaurant's details now. Now we'll move on to the shopping. And the one shop um, that they had for concept art uh, is the Nintendo Superstar Store. There will be plenty of retail options for you to stock up on souvenirs throughout Celestial Park, founded by the explorers that have been uh, on multiple excursions to Super Nintendo World. This store is filled with the colorful keepsakes-themed around Nintendo's beloved characters. So as you can see, all the Nintendo merch you can find right here in Celestial Park. So I love that. Um, They're going to have that merch in Super Nintendo World as well. So this is a good place to stop in and grab some if you forget. Moonship chocolates and Celestial Sweets in Celestial Park. Um, Sounds like a confectionery. So they've got one of those coming. And that is very exciting for all my sweet tooths out there. Speaking of toothless or sweet tooths, let's head over to How to Train Your Dragon, Isle of Burke, and talk about all the details we've gotten for this new world. How to Train Your Dragon, Isle of Burke. 
This world is where the How to Train Your Dragon stories come to life for experienced and novice um, dragon trainers alike. So this is the land right here <laughs> that I'm very, very excited about. And I might even put this above Harry Potter. I'm not going to lie to you. And that, that's coming from a Harry Potter fan. Um, because one, I, I, I've only seen the first How to Train Your Dragon. I'm going to see the next, the other two. It was one of the best movies I've ever seen. It's very good. I love it. I love Hiccup. I love Toothless. And I can't wait to see more of the Vikings and how they are now living together. So this takes place, for some background information, this takes place between uh, movie two and three, um, so like two and a half, where Vikings and dragons are living in harmony. And you're entering into a world of Isle of Burke where you're going to interact with these dragons and become a dragon trainer. And you're going to train your dragons. And you're going to be able to go to a show and a restaurant and all sorts of attractions. This place has tons of attractions. So if you're looking for rides, this might be the place. So let's jump into it. Let's get right into the attractions. Hiccups Wing Gliders is 40 inches. And again, here's the here's our portal. And here is just kind of an overview of what How to Train Your Dragon will look like. Oh, I forgot. They were testing a drone that looked like a dragon above how to train your dragon that was on on the twitter on the twitter bot so that was cool um if they're gonna have real dragons flying around that would be nuts but yeah i mean this is just a beautiful land isle of burke is a beautiful place but i think this land is going to this land's going to compete with the other ones as far as the most beautiful places in epic universe which we've got a lot of i think dark universe is going to be right up there with with isle of burke as far as wow wow <laughs> like the wow factor right so um yeah uh let's go through and talk a little bit about um how to train your dragon and what we get with the roller coaster sorry i'm, I'm on the video i'm kind of flipping around here because i think yeah i got them out of order for this one um hiccups wing gliders on this family thrill coaster hiccup invites brave new vikings to take a ride in his latest glider contraption a winged flying machine and launches aspiring dragon riders in the sky for a dragon's eye view of, Ver of Burke. This goes around the whole land. <laughs> I saw the 3D model. It literally goes through the whole land. That is awesome. As a, again, a very raw, long roller coaster. I cannot speak. Um, but I, I'm, I'm very excited about this attraction. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It goes in through like the water, goes underwater. It does all sorts of crazy things. So can't wait for people to see that and experience that because it looks like it's going to be a great view of everything in Isle of Burke that you could possibly want to see. Now we'll flip backwards and go to fire drill. No height requirement. Um, mischievous uh, Viking twins, rough nut and tough nut, invite teams of Vikings to compete, to outscore and outsoak each other in this wild boat ride. Um, they'll have little targets. You'll, you'll stand and, and you'll have like this little water gun and you spray and you shoot, um, the different targets. And this, there's a ride. I think it's like, it's the, uh, I forget what it's called. Um, there's one in Legoland that is just like this ride, um, where you do get soaked because you're spraying other boats, you're spraying other people, <laughs> you're spraying targets there. The targets and stuff are spraying you back. Like uh, you're going to get this one. You're going to get soaked on. Like, this is like, this is Popeye's kind of soaked. Like this is, you're going to get really wet in this ride. So just keep that in mind. But I did, I think a lot of fun. Everybody loves like the, the shooting games and this is definitely going to be a popular attraction. Now we will move onward. Um, and this is going to be called the dragon racers rally 48 inches. Burke's new Viking racers can participate um, and practice aerobatic um, maneuvers and high-speed barrel rolls on two Viking-made dragon riding trainers that reach heights up to 67 feet in the air. This thing is huge. It's like one of those big pirate ships that swing back and forth like a crate, like a like a cradle. It just this is going to be nuts. Like this is this is going to be one of the the craziest attractions I think that I've ever seen. Universal build. Um, just watching them because they have them up currently and they've been testing them um, and some of the video and footage that I've seen, it, it looks like it's going to be crazy. Like it's going to swing you up real high. That's going to twirl and spin you. Like you're in like this little contraption that you're, that they've built like training, like you're flying on a dragon. Um, 
I think this is going to be quite an intense ride. Um, I think if you've got some motion sickness, it'll be a little tough because I think it does kind of throw you around a bit. But I, I am th- this is such a unique attraction. I can't wait to experience this one. The next one that we can talk about is Biking Training Camp. Junior Vikings will learn everything that they need to know about dragons as they climb, slide, and explore their way through the sprawling interactive adventure play camp. Biking Training Camp features an agility course, a toothless-themed teeter-totter, baby gronkle, dragon climbers, and so much more. A huge playground, a huge interactive playground. They did really well with Shrek Swamp, and I think this one's going to be exactly the same. There's a lot of interactive pieces and games, it looks like, different things that you can do, explore. I'm sure they'll have a, a, an age requirement um, where you can't be over the age of like 12 or 14 to get into this thing. But I think this is going to be fun for the kiddos. Blow off some steam, run around. Um, parents, I'm sure you're going to have places that you can sit around and eat or drink around the area, maybe not inside of the actual thing. But um, yeah, I think this is going to be really popular with the kiddos. And then next, meet Hiccup and Toothless. Guests can visit the Haddock Paddock for an incredible meet and greet experience with heroic uh, dragon rider Hiccup and pose for a photo with his friendly Night Fury Toothless. That's going to be number one on my list. I need to go meet Toothless. I love Toothless so much. He is adorable. So, yeah, meet and greet. Take some photos with your favorite dragon. And I'm assuming they have some other dragons that you might be able to meet at some point. So... Stay tuned for that one because we might get some more details as to if they're adding some other dragons in here. Um, The Untrainable Dragon is a live theater show. So in this live show, featuring beloved characters Hiccup, Gobber, and Astrid, a new dragon shows up on the Isle of Burke, and the Vikings think that they may have finally met their match with the mystery of an untrainable dragon. A show highlights include, or sorry, show highlights include Toothless flying directly overhead. Um... Yeah, I don't know how they're going to pull this off. This is going to be crazy. Um, <laughs> these puppets are going to be so big. Uh, these, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm just so interested to see what this is actually going to be um, because there's a lot of speculation as to if it's going to be screens, are there animatronics? What is it? Like, what are we going to see? So I'm really excited about this theater show. And then this is just kind of look at the land. This is Mead Hall, which is their big dining place. The beating heart of Burke and the village's main gathering hall, Mead Hall, is where guests can feast like a Viking and enjoy a savory menu featuring a variety of meats, fish, sandwiches, and more, along with a collection of meads and cider. Ciders, sorry. Um, yeah, this is going to be um, a very popular spot to grab a bite to eat. It is very big. Um, that menu kind of sounds like what they have at Wizard Inc. World at Harry Potter, to be honest with you. Um, but I think that they're going to have some hearty meals here. You're going to see some like some beef and some beef stew kind of stuff, pot pies maybe. Um, but yeah, I think Mead Hall is going to be a very crowded location, um, especially because when I when I'm thinking about the different family friendlier places to kind of stop and eat this is one that would be high on the list just because of where it is um you know what what the characters are and what that means to the kids um people love toothless people love how to train your dragon spitfire grill overlooking the action of the fire drill water attraction spitfire grill is a quick service restaurant um hearty meals flame seared by the helpful uh, dragon fry cook so that kind of sounds like skewers and like beef and meat um be interested to see what that means but maybe some barbecue um maybe more of that but i'm interested we'll see there's not any kind of concept art for that one hooligans grog and gruel guests can grab quick bites to eat the festive racing themed food stand located in the biking camp which was the play area and after a day of dragon training guests can commemorate their lessons with an array of merchandise available at the highly themed shops with viking traders how to treat your dragon hiccups workshop and toothless um, treasures so uh, i think i actually have toothless's treasures or one of the shops this is kind of what the shops are going to look like so yeah i think that's it for how to train your dragon i'm really excited for this land again i've only seen the first movie but 
it was so very good. I love the characters. I think a lot of people love the characters. They're very attached to How to Train Your Dragon. Supposedly the second movie is just as good as the first and the third is just as good as the second. So I'm very excited to finish out this franchise and learn more about How to Train Your Dragon. But this is How to Train Your Dragon, Isle of Burke over at Epic Universe. What are you most excited about coming to this world and coming to this universe over at Epic Universe in 2025? Leave that in the comments. Are you excited about Meet and Toothless? You excited about the water ride? You're going to get on the dragon uh, trainer uh, ride that you get thrown around and crazy stuff. You're excited for the show. That show sounds very fun. It's a lot of good shows over at Epic Universe. I can't wait to talk about a couple of the other shows that we're going to see. So we're going to move on and head over to Super Nintendo. Welcome to Super Nintendo World. It all begins the moment guests enter the portal to Super Nintendo World, which will transport them through the iconic green pipe into the immersive land. As guests emerge from the pipe, vibrant scenery and exciting kinetic energy surround them as they are greeted by the familiar sights and sounds that they've experienced by playing their Nintendo game consoles. From the towering mist Mount Beanpole and majestic Peach's Castle to swaying piranha plants, pacing Goombas, spinning coins, question mark blocks, and more, Super Nintendo World guests will be able to explore Mar Super Mario Land, when they'll enjoy, or sorry, where they'll enjoy adventures alongside Mario, Luigi, Pete, Princess Peach, and more, and Donkey Kong Country, where they will enjoy encounters and thrills featuring Donkey Kong, Diddy Kong, and other members members of the Kong family. I don't think King Kong will be there, but Donkey and uh, Diddy will be there. Um, not P Diddy, but Diddy. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. We already have this land. Sorry, I got, forgot to change my slides over. Um, this is the entrance. It's got that green tube or pipe, I guess, um, that they are iconic in Mario that you kind of jump down and you can transport into different lands and different things like that. And just like that, you're into Super Nintendo World. And there is Donkey Kong, Yoshi, Mario, Luigi, and Princess Peach, and Toad. Um, so... This land I'm very excited about. I grew up playing Mario, obviously, Super Mario, Mario Kart. Um, we played Diddy Kong Racing. We played, um, what was the other one? Donkey Kong something. Donkey Kong's Adventure. What was it called? I don't remember. But that being said, we have played a lot of Super Nintendo, and these characters are very near and dear to my heart, and I can't wait because there, I know there's a lot of people my age that we all grew up playing Super Mario and um, seeing a lot of Mario Brothers and Donkey Kong. So this is going to be a blast. I love Nintendo. I can't wait to see maybe they can expand this a little bit and include some other um, Nintendo characters uh, and franchises. But this is, I'm looking forward to this. I know it already exists in Universal Hollywood, so I can just go over there and experience it right now. But uh, again, we'll wait until 2025. But we're going to jump right into the attractions. Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge, 40 inches. Guests can, uh, guests are arrived, sorry, guests are invited <laughs> to join Team Mario and Battle Team Bowser for the Golden Cup in this groundbreaking attraction that fuses augmented reality, projection mapping technology, and elaborate environments to bring the fun of Mario Kart video games series to life in a compelling ride-through experience. Guests up for the challenge will enter through Bowser's Castle, where they'll wind its corridors and get a glimpse at Bowser's deceptive plans to stack the odds in his favor before boarding this cart and heading into the starting line. Then, guests steer through a variety of Mario Kart courses, collecting coins, tossing shells at Team Bowser, dodging obstacles, and more, as they join their favorite characters and compete to help them Team Mario win the race. So I'm assuming we're going to be getting... Um, wow, this country very country sounding. Um, Welcome to country, country land. Um, but yeah, no, I think we're going to be getting, obviously, Rainbow Row. I think that's obvious. Um, I think it probably does exist in Hollywood, and I'm just speaking to things that already exist and we know are coming. But I haven't looked at any of these spoilers. I've tried to avoid Mario as much as, or Super Nintendo World as much as possible because I knew it was coming to Epic Universe. So I have avoided everything that I could possibly see as far as um, pictures of the one that's are in Hollywood. And then, like I said, uh, as I say that, that's the, how do I, how do I, that, that one, there we go. <laughs> it was hard to do because the, the camera's reflected, but yeah, that's the picture from the Universal Studios Hollywood attraction. So that's the only really thing that I've seen as far as Mario Kart is concerned, but I'm very excited about this attraction. I think it's going to be very, very popular. 
Um, Yoshi's Adventures. So I, this is kind of out of order, but Yoshi's Adventures, if you're on the YouTube channel, you can kind of see it here. They're coming out of um, the, what was it called? Mount Beanpole. That's right. Um, Mount Beanpole, Yoshi Adventure, 34 inches. The delightful Yoshi's Adventures attraction will make its U.S. debut when Super Nintendo World opens at Epic Universe. So this exists, I think, in the Universal um, Studios. I think it's Tokyo. I don't remember where the other Universal Park is um, in the international realm. But um, on this family-friendly ride, guests of all ages will enjoy breathtaking views of Super Mario Land as they join Yoshi's um, and travel through that's hard because i read that as like yoshi like with apostrophe s but it's like yoshis in general are kind um and travel through mushroom kingdom landscapes in search of glowing eggs encountering many familiar characters along the way oh sorry i got the hiccups um i think that's going to be a great attraction looks very kid friendly looks very family friendly but i love yoshi and i will definitely be writing that toadstool cafe at Toadstool Cafe, guests can enjoy a variety of tasty dishes inspired by the world of Super Mario and its characters, including Mario and Luigi themed burgers, Super uh, Mushroom Soup, Piranha Plant, Caprice, Fire uh, Flower Spaghetti and Meatballs, and so much more. Guests will be able to get glimpses uh, of several toads cooking up culinary creations through various virtual windows as they dine inside the restaurant. So this is beautiful. <laughs> I when I first saw the pictures of this and I think this is the one that is also in Hollywood so spoiler um, but just the way this is set up I love the lighting I love that it looks like you're actually in um, inside of a toadstool um, <laughs> like you're inside of a mushroom it looks like it's so cool looking it looks very Italian I think we're getting an Italian flavored obviously um, here at this restaurant it's a, a great place to kind of sit, relax. I love that you can see the toads cooking, kind of like, I guess, Minion Cafe, where you'll be able to see the, the different toad, um, like characters, um, I guess, toads uh, cooking in those virtual windows, kind of in that back kitchen area. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. Toad, toad's always up to no good, it seems. He always seems to be a menace of the group. But I don't know. I'm excited about Toadstool Cafe. I think it's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. And I love Italian food, so really excited about that. Um, I guess we'll go back and kind of hang out here. Yoshi's Snack Island and Turbo Boost Treats. Guests can also pick up delicious treats, snacks, and beverages at this walk-up dining location. Or at these walk-up dining locations. So it looks like it's going to be two different ones. So you got Snack Island and then the Boost Treats. So you're going to have different kind of treats at different... I think they're going to be themed to obviously Yoshi and, and maybe, um, I guess, like the Turbo Boost Treats that kind of look like different superpowers that you get in Mario Kart. Um, one up factory and Mario motors guests can shop for souvenirs, apparel toys, and more inspired by their um, favorite super Mario characters and adventures within these retail locations. Meet and greets include Mario, Luigi, princess peach and toad throughout various areas in super Mario land. And now we can shift over to donkey Kong country. At the edge of Super Mario Land, guests will discover an entrance that leads them to Donkey Kong Country, where they'll explore the lush tropical landscape from the video game series, complete with the small or tall trees, waterfalls, landmarks such as the Golden Tempo, Temple, and more. Guests can enjoy Minecart Madness, which is this first attraction if you're looking at the video version. Guests will hop into a minecart in 36 inches is the height requirement. Guests will hop into a minecart and careen through the jungle to help Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong protect the coveted golden banana on this first of its kind family coaster, utilizing an unprecedented ride system, innovative technology, and a unique coaster design. Mar minecart Madness will send riders on a thrilling adventure that um, they will experience, the, sorry, that where they will discover and experience the jaw-dropping maneuvers that they've seen Donkey Kong and the mine cards perform in the video games, which if you've seen that, that's wild, uh, including getting blasted out of a barrel, seemingly jumping over gaps as they uh, speed along the rickety track and so much more. A selection of tropical menu and merchandise items uh, and offerings are will also be found um, inside Donkey Kong Country. Um, so they're going to have different places to shop. I just want to talk about this minecart madness. Um, I've seen video and I've like the, the, the kind of like the concept art of it. 
And also I've seen the model over at Epic Universe and it kind of shows you what they do. The technology it uses is going to be fascinating. Um, it does make it look like the carts are jumping over gaps in the track, which obviously is not a thing, but it does. <laughs> it looks like you jump, like it looks like the track ends and you jump over to the next one. And it's it's going to be insane. Like I feel like the things they can do with this cart, I'm assuming they kind of twist and turn a little bit. Obviously, they turn maybe 360. Um, there's a launch that launching out of the barrel is kind of like one of those launch that you speed up and go like zero to 60, kind of like on um, the mummy. But I mean, th this attraction, um, again, it's more family friendly, I think, because it's 36 inches. But I also think it's going to be pretty intense for, for kids um, because I, I do feel like Donkey Kong Country and Minecart, like it's got to be rickety. It's got to have that like that oh no feeling <laughs> like this could go wrong um because that's what donkey kong always was it was always like a this could go wrong at any point and donkey kong and diddy kong could go flying off the tracks and you got to start all over so i'm interested to see how they incorporate some of that stuff into this attraction but donkey kong country i would say i put that over mario because i i played more donkey kong when i was younger i love donkey kong i love diddy kong but I am very excited about Super Nintendo, what they can do in the future, adding more characters and franchises and video games. And I'm very, very excited about Mario, Luigi, and the gang and Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong. But again, give me all the Super Nintendo world that, that you could possibly give me. I'm very excited about it. One more thing that I wanted to talk about um, in this land is going to be the Power Up Band. It is this interactive band that you play games inside of the lands where you collect points and you're kind of gaming up the game so again it's like playing a video game inside of a video game they've got different punch points where you can make things interact inside of the land by wearing one of these kind of like the magic band plus where like it interacts with different aspects of the land you collect points i'm assuming on the rides as well so definitely check these out if you're going to epic universe and you're heading into super nintendo world i can't wait to see what this is all about and how this all works. I know it exists in Hollywood, but I've not seen any videos. So I can't wait to take my video out and do this inside of the new Super Nintendo world. So I don't know, very excited about Super Nintendo world. What are your favorite parts? What are you looking forward to most? Maybe what are some things that you got to do first day? Who you got to meet? Who's your character? Who is your person in Mario Kart? Drop those in the comments below. And we are going to now move on into Dark Universe one of the most highly anticipated worlds in Epic Universe. All right. We are almost halfway done with this one. Uh, Dark Universe, experience monstrous thrills and horrors as you dare to step into the fog-shrouded depths of Dark Universe. Encounter the unique residents of Darkmoor Village as you stroll the crumbling streets in a foreboding world of unearthly legends and monstrous experiments, a shadowy realm where myth and reality meet, the portal into dark universe features an electric coil on the top of it. Um, and here's kind of an overlook of dark universe. Here's that coil. Um, and again, that coil is, this is where you can really see where Kronos is playing a part where it's collecting all that energy, absorbing all that energy, where it's open these portals. The portals are kind of lighting up because it's ripped that part, in, uh, that hole in the universe where you can enter into these places and become immersed in these different worlds. You can really see it here. And they actually said, as you're walking through the land, because this goes into the Frankenstein Manor, watch along the walls where you can see electric currents going through the walls and the different parts of this land, especially because it's darker, it's going to have like those electric beams going through it, feeding into the Frankenstein Manor, which is going to be an amazing attraction. We'll get into that next. But this land, guys, I, I think this is the land that I'm most anticipating, and I think a lot of us are. This is going to be the land that is the most crowded, probably on opening day. This is the one where people are going to flock to. This is the opening one. This is the, again, I can go on and on. I, I do think that your, um, I would say, diehard Universal fans, annual pass holder fans, um, fans like me, you know, people that are influenced, like this is where they're going because of how amazing this looks. This looks like something we've never really gotten here. It's about the villains. It's about the monsters. It's about these creatures that cause havoc, that wreak havoc, that do evil, that, you know, it, it just has that element. It's the Horror Nights people. It's the universal people. It's the families. It's the stories. It's the legendary story. I mean, I can go on and on by how impressive these details were and how good this land is going to be. I can already just feel 
the vibes of this land. Um, I am so excited. So let me know in the comments below, is this your number one on the hype list as far as the different worlds inside of Epic Universe? I would say this is number one for me. But let's get into the attractions. So Monsters Unchained, the Frankenstein Experiment. Dark ride that brings you up close to iconic creatures and figures such as the Wolfman, the Mummy, the Creature from the Black Lagoon, the Brides of Dracula, and more. Venture deep into the eerie catacombs where the brilliant Dr. Frankenstein, Victoria Frankenstein, unveils her latest daring experiments attempting to harness the power of these iconic monsters. But beware, her control falters and Dracula breaks free, unleashing a torrent of monstrous fury. Will, be, will you escape? The clutches of these unleashed horrors you're going to see um the wolfman so here is a look sorry here's a look at dark more i forgot to go through these slides i knew i was going to do this at some point dark more village you go through the catacombs to reach the frankenstein manor and then once you hit the frankenstein manor that is where you get again monsters unchained the frankenstein experiment this is a look at frankenstein manor and it is very spooky. Again, it's got that charge going up to the top ceiling where Victoria Frankenstein is doing her evil experiments. Well, I guess not evil, but is trying to conjure up all that power and electricity. And unfortunately, Dracula seems to be the ultimate villain. Dracula and Frankenstein just don't get along. Um, <laughs> these Universal's monsters are always colliding. Uh, see what I did there? Um, but yeah, no, the, this is going to be a lot of fun. It's going to unleash all the Universal monsters. Um, Wolfman looks like he's in it as well. Um, Dracula, you've got the Bride of Frankenstein. Um, you've got different characters that are universal monsters that are going to appear in this. It might not have gotten all of them released. Um, maybe we, we get some surprises, but I think we're going to get some very interesting characters that show up for this new attraction, Monsters Unchained. Um, this sounds like a Horror Nights house, right? Um, the Monsters Unchained one. So, I'm very excited. Love Horror Nights. Looking at this attraction, though, I mean, look at it. Look how beautiful this is. You can actually see the ride vehicle looks a lot like the one from Forbidden Journey. Looks like we're going to get some screens. Looks like we'll, all get, we'll also get some um, state-of-the-art new animatronics of Wolfman. So I'll show you what I mean by that. But look at this. Bride of Frankenstein, Victoria Frankenstein. Um, you got the Wolfman down here. Um Dracula breaking loose. Here he is breaking loose. So that's going to be one of the best. I think that you're going to get quite an experience here where this is where chaos ensues and Dracula has started to unleash all these monsters on you. Um, this is what I mean by Wolfman. So if you're looking at the video, if you're on the YouTube version, if you're not, let me try to explain this to you. So they released a video, right? They released videos with all these details that have been released for the different worlds at Epic Universe. Wolfman has an animatronic. Right. And there's other animatronics, too, that I think are going to be fantastic over in Harry Potter. But the Wolfman one, it looks so real. It looked like a real person, the way it was moving. And it, you don't ever get really much of its face. And actually, somebody did like an overexposure of this. And the Universal actually put a black dot, like a big circle. You can't see it. Like how much editing you do this, you can't see the wolf's face. Wolfman... I mean, it literally, it literally looked like he was real. It looked like he was coming out of it, that attraction to get you. And I cannot wait to experience this because it looks dark. You can actually see the hair and how lifelike it looks. I mean, it just, it's unbelievable. I think the technology, again, at Epic Universe is going to be some stuff that we've never seen before in theme parks. And Dark Universe has opened up a new version of a theme park where horror meets are we going to get out? Are we going to survive? It's scary. It's eerie. It's dark. It's fun. It's alive, but dead. Like <laughs> it's, it's going to be insane. Um, and, and monsters unchained is, is the start of that. The next one up is curse of the werewolf. It is an attraction, um, a family spinning roller coaster based on the Wolfman. Immerse yourself in the origin story of one of the horrors, one of horror's most legendary creatures. Your adventure begins with the encampment um of the guild of mystics so this is kind of where you enter the attraction here with the mystics and you're actually going to meet maleva maleva is um one of the mystics that's going to be telling you the story of um the the werewolf and the curse of the werewolf what happened and then you go into this attraction and you get to go meet him <laughs> you get to come meet him again he is out once again um and not only was he in monsters unchained he is also going to get his own um uh, appearance here in the uh, actual uh, attraction. So 
yeah, th this is a spinning roller coaster. It's going to go through kind of a wooded area, like you're going through the forest to catch this said werewolf. And there he is. He finds you. And this animatronic, I hope it works because it, it's like coming at you and swinging at you like the Yeti was supposed to. That's going to add a different kind of element to uh, the attraction here. And I, I love this because it looks like it's turning right before you get to the monster. So it looks like you're going to get this big reveal of like, oh no, monster, monster. And then he, then maybe a monster here, maybe a monster there. I don't know. I think uh, there's a lot of things that could be happening. I mean, these people look like they're looking at a screen or something over here. That's terrifying up here as well. Like they're looking at all sorts of crazy things. So not to mention that that thing is coming through that shed or wherever they are. So this looks like one of the best attractions. Again, a really long roller coaster. Like they did, they've covered some ground with these roller coasters. They are massive at Epic Universe. On to food. Let's talk Das Steakhouse. Dine at Das Steakhouse, a cleverly named restaurant that appears and plays a playful nod to one of the vampire's classic weaknesses, the steak, obviously. This vast, casual restaurant run by familiars rests atop of the ancient catacombs where the dark more vampires reside. So as you're going through those catacombs, that's kind of the idea is that, that Dracula is out there and that's where his family had been buried. As you dine above them. Well, that's terrifying. Um, they dine below you. <laughs> okay, all right. Um, they, they, do they, do, do vampires eat zombies? Do vampires eat dead people? Is that, what? Um, what? Uh, I guess. At this fast casual restaurant, you can enjoy kebabs, burgers, sandwiches, and ribs, along with other offerings. So very barbecue-esque. Um, it's going to have a lot of meats. Obviously, that makes sense. Vampires eat people. Um, I'm assuming they're going to have a blood-themed drink. That'd be fun, right? So maybe some Kool-Aid that's red. That'd be cool. I mean, look at this theming, right? Uh, the Burning Blade Tavern. This is awesome. And the Burning Blade Tavern, the actual blade up here on the windmill, it's going to be set ablaze every once in a while. It's not constantly going to be on fire, but it'll be set ablaze throughout the day. Um, it's kind of like a show, kind of like the dragon, I think, over at Harry Potter, where it's, it's every once in a while. The exterior of the Burning Blade uh, Tavern draws inspiration from the fiery fine finale of the 1931 Universal Monsters film Frankenstein. An angry mob surrounded the old mill, trapping Frankenstein inside and setting it ablaze. Now it has been transformed into a hangout spot for the Dark Moors monsters hunters. Well, I guess that makes sense. While enjoying tavern food, you can hear the stories of the infamous hounds, boastful hunters from beyond Dark Moor, all while surrounded by impressive display of monster heads as they consider them their trophies. As you listen to the captivating tales of the monster hunter quest, um, enjoy a menu of burgers, wings, bratwurst, pretzels, and selections of beverages. Very tavern-like food. Very pub-like food. Um, they actually have, I think I've included it. So this is a look at what it looks like on the inside, right? It kind of looks like three room sticks in that area. Hog's head um, over in Hogsmeade. Kind of looks like that. Or boar's head, sorry. What is it? Hog's head. I think it's hog's head. Boar's head's the, <laughs> the deli place. Um, but this, this is interesting. Universal seems like they're going to be using actors throughout the lands. Now, theme parks have promised this forever, right? That we're going to get more immersive experiences with actors playing locals or playing whatever pieces they need inside of these lands, restaurants, whatever it might be. But it's a lot of money, right? You got to pay these people. They are not working for free. Um, and people have axed it like immediately because like it just doesn't work. People crowd around them, take photos. So I'm interested to see how long this actually actually takes place. But if they do have these hunters, these monster hunters wandering around telling you stories as you're trying to eat and stuff like that, that would be so cool. Um, maybe they can put them on like a stage and they can tell stories. But I'm interested. It looks like they're going to have live actors. I don't know how long that lasts because that usually doesn't. But I guess we'll see. There's another restaurant called De Lacy's um, Cottage and a quick service restaurant spot named after the family observed by the monster. Uh, after the family observed by the monster and Mark, or sorry, Mary Shelley's novel Frankenstein. Here, guests can find a variety of snacks and cool treats like cinnamon bread, ice cream, and twisted taters and more. So it sounds like much more of like a snack and dessert place. You can meet the monsters. So um, this is a monster playing a violin. 
<laughs> or like a village woman playing a violin. And then you've got uh, over here, uh, Frankenstein, the Bride of Frankenstein meet and greets. I think Wolfman and them have also been rumored. You can also meet Igor, um, the Invisible Man. You can uh, maybe meet Dr. Vic uh, Doctor Victoria, Frankenstein eventually. But it does say that there are going to be roaming monsters, roaming monster hunters, um, and different people telling different things about the enchanting tales of the uh, universal monster lore. I think they'll interchange these as well. I think you'll get different monsters um, as time goes on. Time goes on. I would actually be interested to see, like maybe Universal starts to do more movies with some of these Universal monsters, more up to date movies, because a lot of these are classics from like the 1930s, 1940s, 1950s. Like these are, there's not really any like modern telling us of these stories. So, like there are, like obviously, but like not from like Universal. So. Interested to see if that that's kind of where they're headed with this. Also, they'll have a Darkmoor monster makeup experience. Earlier this year, Universal Studios announced, uh, or sorry, had a limited makeup experience that transformed guests into the iconic silver screen monsters. Well, they took that idea and now have kind of like a Pirates boot, uh, Booty Boppy Boutique kind of place. Dark Universe's Darkmoor monster makeup experience promising some very good transformations <laughs> into your favorite monsters. And then they have a shop that I actually never seen before. And then I found this yesterday. Bring a piece of the eternal world of dark universe home with you at um, Pretorius scientific oddities. You can collect and select from an array of commemorative merchandise and mementos. It's a monster monster merch, baby. I love it. I love it. We already have a lot of monster merch, but I think we're going to get even more unique to specific monsters. So I'm really looking forward to that. I love a good universal monster. So Looking forward to that. Looking forward to this. Let me know in the comments below. It, again, is Dark Universe one of your top? Is it the top? What what kind of do you rank them in? Are you not ranking them until we actually see them? Like, what's your hype? Are you excited for this? Um, do you hope for more attractions in this place? You know, what are some things that you hopefully down the road might get from this Universal Monster experience? Are you hoping for different characters? What are you hoping from the ride? Like, what is your ideal experience that you want to have when you step into the dark universe? Like, what's the first thing you go to? What's the first thing you see? What's the first place you go and eat? Like, let me know in the comments below how excited you are for dark universe. I'm very excited. And I think it will be uh, number one on my list as far as hype. So I'm very much looking forward to the dark universe. Now, let's head over to one that's probably second on my list between that um, and probably Isle of Burke. And that is the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Ministry of Magic. Last but certainly not least is Harry Potter. Um, and that is the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Ministry of Magic. So upon entering this new land, visitors will journey from a muggle park in Paris to 1920s um, place Cachet, a hidden shopping district in the Wizarding Paris. Uh, the area will feature uh, Hosminian. Hosminian? Um, architecture, I think I have no idea how you pronounce that. Um, shops, sidewalk cafes, and Parisian domes. Guests can engage in interactive wine activities, encounter magical creatures at a traveling circus, and for the first time within the wizarding world, travel between countries and eras using the Metro Flu system, leading to a new adventure within the British Ministry of Magic. Fans will instantly be transported back in time and location, entering that place Kachi or cachet a wizarding pocket of paris welcome to the wizarding world of harry potter they have a butterbeer cart that is also featured so i probably should flip on over to there's harry potter and the wand there is a look at the lay of the land and there you go there are the streets of paris right when you enter inside of the portal and into this parisian style downtown area this parisian pocket that is only for wizards not for the muggles so you have somehow gotten into it um because you're a wizard now and there is the butterbeer cart um i don't know if i'm going to try to pronounce it i guess i will beer rubberier cart butterbeer i don't know how to say that so anybody who speaks french how do you say butterbeer no visit to the wizarding world of harry potter is complete without butterbeer Guests can stop by the Butterbeer cart. Don't again, not gonna try to pronounce that during their visit to place Cache or Cachy for a frosty, delicious mug of the fan favorite beverage. So this looks like it's gonna have the cold version and um, 
the hot version. I don't know if the frozen version is actually sold at these cards. I've never gotten the frozen version. So if you get the frozen version, where do you get it? Because, I mean, I don't want it, but I don't know if I know where you get it at, at the other two. So let me know. Wand shop. There's going to be a wand shop. A little different from the familiar ramshackle environment of Ollivander. Wow, are they calling uh, Ollivander's ramshack? That's mean. Here you'll discover the work of wand maker Akajor. Sorry, I got I got to this part and I laughed, which is a little more sophisticated. Yikes. It's a shot fired at Ollivander. Poor guy. May he rest in peace. Um, indulge in a whole new culture and discover beautifully crafted French-style wands we're getting new ones, baby. Um, or for the Hollivander hardcores, don't worry. Some of your old favorites from England have been imported too. Okay. So they're going to have the character wands again, but you're going to have some new takes on some wands. And I'm excited because I can't wait to see what those look like. Does Newt have a wand right now at, at a Wizarding World? Does someone know that? Leave that in the comments. Does Newt have a wand currently? Or are we going to get our first Newt wand? I need to watch Fantastic Beast again. I do like it. I don't like it nearly as much as the other seven um, books, but um, or eight movies. But uh, yeah, I'll give Fantastic Beast another try. I really liked it. I enjoyed it. It's not the best, but it was definitely entertaining, and it gave me kind of the feels. Um, I actually did like Crimes of Grindelwald a lot. So uh, yeah, Lace Galleries, Galleries, Mirificus. Um, such as school uniforms from international wizarding schools, we're sure you'll find your French wizarding experience extremely très chic. Fleur Delacour would certainly nod in approval. Let's go shopping with Fleur Delacour, I guess. We're going to have different wizarding outfits and different wizarding garb in the new shop. i got to keep remembering to flip through this. Um, there's the interactive wands in the new uh, wand shop. So I kind of go back to the wand shop. That wand shop looks so good. It looks so good. French wands, very pretty. Kind of looks like a Tiffany's. Tiffany's made wands. <laughs> That's how I would describe it. There's going to be interactive wand places where you can actually interact and um, collect different Fantastic Beasts. I'm hoping there's some kind of game or element to this. That'd be a lot of fun. And then um, there is some talk, obviously, about the food. So here are some food options. The only concept we are... Art we got uh, is uh, this first cafe, Cafe Laird de la Serene, a wonder of French architecture adorned with carved marble and details of fantastic beast hidden in the tile and mosaic designs. Cafe Laird de la Serene is a charming cafe where guests can find French sandwiches, plates du jour, and desserts. So French cafe, French cuisine, love that. Going to be very pretty. Um, herbology lovers will expect to find some magical flora and fauna from the wizarding world on display here at this restaurant as you grab your delicious, delicious pastries or French sandwiches. Um, the outdoor seating area has like the seats where they're like in like downtown Paris, like the Parisian cafe seating where like your table is in front and then the two chairs are here. So you're facing out towards the street. Very European. Love it. I think it's a great touch. Can't wait to experience that. It is hot in Florida, so we're going to have to do that at a time where it's not so hot. But this is magnificent. This is a beautiful-looking cafe. I can't wait to eat inside of it. I love French food, so really looking forward to that. French sandwiches are some of the best sandwiches. If you've not been back, I forget exactly what the shop's called, but it's the shop right outside of the Beauty and the Beast shop, or uh, Beauty and the Beast show um, over in the French Pavilion at Epcot. If you haven't tried sandwiches from the French is highly recommended they are so very good and very light and very um good on a hot day and i think that's what you're going to get over here at universal studios and epic universe so looking forward to that can't wait to see what that's all about in the cafe there it looks like a great cafe um so i'm very excited like gobelet Noir in a shadowy corners of a palette or of place kashi it's a mysterious time-worn aubrey aubrey don't know what that is. Um, <laughs> where international dark witches and wizards um, gather to escape the prying eyes of the Paris ministry and over a, a hearty meal in hushed conversation. So um, this is what the building looks like. Kind of looks like, uh, is that Leaky Cauldron? Yeah. No. Well, yeah, Leaky Cauldron, Shrieking Shackish, maybe. 
That's what I wish they would have built. Shrieking Shack. I want a Shrieking Shack. It'd be scary. Um, but yeah, the menus here, starters such as soups and salads, as well as a variety of entrees and desserts. That's really all the details we've got there. And then they've got a place called Bar Moonshine. American witches and wizards can enjoy a taste of home at Bar Moonshine, where they'll find exclusive beers, wines, and cocktails served amid the U.S. Quidditch, witted, US Quidditch team pennants and other items of wizarding Americana. So I guess we have some kind of bar there. Like, I guess we have British pubs here. We would decide, or French restaurants here. We've just decided to have an American moonshine bar. Like, that seems wild. Is that is that a thing in Paris? Is that a thing, guys, that live in Paris or in Europe? Do we, do we have moonshine bars? Is that common? I mean, I've been to England. There's not many American things there. So I don't know. That's interesting to me. But that's fun. Quidditch. Uh, that they're implementing Quidditch, like a Quidditch bar. That's cool. I like that. It's like a sports bar, but Quidditch bar. Are they going to have... <gasps> That'd be fun if they had like um, Quidditch games and stuff. That'd be fun. All right. The show. So this is actually called Les Cirque Arconus. Um, and a featured... I'm but butchering the French language, by the way. As featured in Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald... Get ready for a larger-than-life recreation of the mysterious Wizarding Circus, Le Cirque Arcanus. Um, fans will be able to walk through the theater and discover live performers, puppets, um, and special effects, such as, um, or sorry, just like a real-life circus. But this is the one, or sorry, this one is a little different. Here you'll spot magical creatures, such as a demigeist, deer crawl, uh, moon calves, and more, and encounter characters such as Ringmaster Skinder and his assistant Winlan, a brand new character exclusive to the parks. And who knows, perhaps a certain um, magizoologist may just make an uh, appearance. Is that Newt? Who who is that? You're in quite you're in for quite a show. So look at this. Like this technology is gonna be fantastic. Like they're bringing fantastic beast to a circus. Like <laughs> this is gonna be so much fun. Here you can see them. Opening the suitcase in which some of the Fantastic Beasts will probably come out of. It's probably Newt's, um, Newt's Commander's uh, suitcase right there. There, oh no, too far. Um, that they're in. But then they've got like a flying effect. They had like a witch flying around in here, and um, all sorts of circus acts. So if they're going to do circus acts in here, that's going to be fascinating. Some acrobats and all sorts of different things. They're also going to do some Fantastic Beasts. Maybe some magic. Ooh, that'd be cool. I wonder if there's some magic in there. That'd be fun. So I'm looking forward to this. this. This is number one on my list as far as shows to go see. Um, I think this one's going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait to see what it's like. Okay, let's talk about it. And then uh, then we'll wrap this thing up because this has been a long video and I'm winded and I keep messing up because I'm getting more tired and my voice is starting to get, get going. So uh, last but certainly not least is the attraction that is coming to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, Ministry of Magic, and that is Harry Potter and the Battle at the Ministry. So you walk back, go past the butter beer cart, all the way in the back, on the right-hand side, it's going to have the flu network. You'll be able to do the Metro flu, and you'll be able to travel from uh, Paris into the flu network, into the Ministry of Magic in London. As you can see right here in the concept art, you come out of the flu powder network um, fireplace, the green smoke comes up or fire comes up. It releases you into the Ministry of Magic. And there you are, life size in the Ministry of Magic. These windows are huge. I mean, the grand reveal of this, people have said, you will be shocked by how big this is. Like you are in the Harry Potter Ministry of Magic from the original seven and I I really I will have a smile on my face the whole time because like even walking into Gringotts was really cool. Walking into Hogsmeade every time I walk in there, I just I get the chills. Walking into um Diagon Alley, chills. Walking into this, I think because it's going to feel uh, the size that it was and like just the feel of that movie. And, and that's where the movies really start to get exciting when they, when they've actually visited the ministry, it starts to get really ramped up. Like this is what my childhood was. I, I loved Harry Potter, right? I love the stories. Um, I love everything attached to it, the stories, right? Um, 
J.K. Rowling aside, I, I do really enjoy. I, I mean, this is what I grew up with. Is when I was sick and I stayed home, Harry Potter was it. Um, when I was feeling down or I needed something to cheer me up, it was Harry Potter. Like when I was growing up. So this is this was a big deal to me. And and when they released this information about the the battle of ministry, I was I was shocked. I was like, this is impressive. Like this is one of the best lands I think I've ever seen. And just kind of flipping through, you're going to be on this elevator ride. You're going through and you're actually tracking down Dolores Jane Umbridge, who is the worst person besides Voldemort in the whole series. And she's gotten loose. Uh, this is after the Dark Lord is gone and she is now on trial, but some of the Death Eaters are still around to help her out. She's trying to escape from the ministry. As you can see here, it looks like they've knocked somebody out or killed somebody down here on the on the bottom here. Um, but your goal is and your task is to travel with Harry Potter and Hermione Granger and Ron Weasley, once again, to go find Umbridge, capture her. And there's going to be like a new ride vehicle you're going to get in. It looks like an elevator. So it's like the elevators that go through the Ministry of Magic. You're going to be riding through this elevator network and going through. They did say they're going to try to limit the amount of screens. They've got a lot of interactive animatronics that they built. These rooms are kind of built out to be less screens than what we're used to and more animatronic and real life projections and all these kind of things. So I'm interested to see what they meant by that. Is it a complete, like, let's get as far away from screens as possible? Cause that would be even cooler if this was like built out to where it was just tons of animatronics and some screens in the background to do like the dragons or whatever it might be um, that end up in, in the ministry. I don't know what, what are in ministry. Those look like ghosts up there. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm so excited about this. Um, this is going to be the number one attraction, I think, in all of Epic Universe. I think people are going to find this a lot like they find some of the other Harry Potter rides and attractions. I, I just, I think that the technology they're going to use, the the feeling and sentiment in behind what this attraction and this story has meant for so many people, it's going to be a very interesting uh, time to, to get back there and ride it, I think, because it's going to be such a long wait. But again, traveling here and and you know, finalizing the stories that we've all grown to love uh, is is what beyond a Harry Potter fan could possibly ask, I think. And this puts you right in the story. I love it. So I, I, I'm really going to enjoy that. I think that this is going to be a lot of fun. And I'm so glad that Ministry of Magic um, has become a thing at Epic Universe. So that closes us out. That was a lot of fun. It was a really long video, but I hope you enjoyed it because we talked all things Epic Universe, the only thing we're waiting on is the Grand Helios uh, Hotel details, which we haven't really got any um, concept art details really beyond that first description. So looking forward to that. But what are you most excited for in Epic Universe? Where are you ranking the lands? What are you hitting first? What's the first thing you got to do once Epic Universe opens in 2025? Leave that in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, like, subscribe, share with your friends. Um, I'll probably post this as an audio version eventually as a podcast. If you haven't checked out the podcast, definitely do so. It's We Met Behind the Castle. Also over on TikTok, We Met Behind the Castle. You can find us at Instagram, We Met Behind the Castle. Behind Castle on X, at Facebook, We Met Behind the Castle. Spotify, anywhere you get your podcast. Again, We Met Behind the Castle. So again, thanks for watching this video. We hope to see you guys in the next video. And we cannot wait to see you all at Epic Universe in 2025.